Hello, greetings everyone. Thanks for joining us today for the BizOps Summit. My name is Sushil Kumar. I am the head of DevOps business here at Broadcom. And we are so excited today to share with you a number of thoughts and perspectives from the practitioners as well as industry about what the digital transformation is doing to the way we run our business. And in particular, uh, this concept of BizOps, which is all about fusion of business with the digital operations. Now it is becoming a continuum of responsibility that starts all the way from a business analyst who really understands what the market needs, what the business needs. And then that continuum extends to applications developers where we need to build the software in an agile fashion, deliver it, and then finally the same software is is presented to the customers, and that's where the operations teams come to the picture to make sure that the software is delivering the intended or desired user experience. So um, unlike in the past where there used to be a silos and these teams didn't talk to each other, today is the success of digital transformation requires all the stakeholders to have a unified view of the entire chain and then constant collaboration in order to make sure that we get the desired business results. And what that means is that these silos now need to come together and the values that we deliver to each team is now more interconnected than ever, right? So uh, planning is all about making sure that whatever work that we decide to do, that's optimized for the value that is intended to deliver to business as well as uh, to the customer. Application delivery and application development and delivery team actually need to make sure that we build the right software um, that caters to the requirements and actually delivers the value that was desired from the business stakeholder. But at the same time, we build the software with, um, with, with the right quality so that we can, we can deliver that desired experience to the customers. But oftentimes, one of the challenges has been that in spite of doing all the uh, testing and everything else, there is, uh, there is always a concern and some trepidation on the part of application development team as to what the post-release experience will look like. So more and more, I think in this day and age of Agile and, and the rapid pace of business requires that we not only build the right software, but we should have the right instrumentations and the data points to be able to release the software with confidence. And then finally, IT operations um, needs to make sure that uh, those values are actually delivered. And if not, then a continuous feedback loop needs to go back to the planning and application delivery. So that's really the way modern digital enterprise differs from a more traditional brick and mortar enterprise. And I'm so glad today to be joined by a person who is in the middle of making this transformation happen, uh, Rich Jordan. Um, he is one of the senior application development and QA uh, leaders at the Nationwide Building Society, which is the UK's one of the largest financial institutions that is making uh, the home ownership possible. And we'd love to hear from Rich how he sees some of these practices actually playing out in the real world. And... Uh, how he has been able to lead this transformation. So, Rich, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Ashil. It's great to be here. Um, so, what I wanted to talk to you today was about um, uh, really our journey within Nationwide and uh, the challenges uh, that we face and how we've overcome them. Nationwide um, is a uh, an organisation that traces its roots back to about 1874. Um, we're essentially a UK-based financial services organisation um, but really, um, from an IT perspective, um, our journey and, and our story really starts um, probably in about the 1970s, where since that time, we've come to be um, the nation's and the world's largest building society through a, a series of mergers and acquisitions of smaller building societies, um, most recently through the 2018 um, credit crunch where we merge with um, a number of um, building societies um, to become what we are today, which is the Nationwide Building Society. Now, really from a, 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 an IT perspective, um, what am I talking about there? I'm talking about um, the complexity of merging not just organizations, but merging IT um, uh, landscapes and estates. And really, from an architecture perspective, um, what we have today um, really wouldn't architect it if you had a choice. We, we are where we are because of the business imperative. And because of those challenges, um, 
getting to a place where we're doing um, continuous testing um, agile and DevOps ways of working is real challenges. And, and this is what we're going to talk about over the next 20 minutes about how we're facing into them. So nationwide, just to give you a bit of an um, idea of size and scale, in 2019, um, we made about 26,000 uh, production changes. Um, and 2019 was our best year in terms of um, resilience and, and agility. So year on year, we continue to exceed what that is. Again, in 2020, we'll look to exceed that again. Um, our IT function, um, we are starting to move from a project-centric organization to a product-centric organization. And so we have a, a hybrid of projects and squad model in terms of how we do delivery. Um, we have around 130 um, change initiatives that are going on at any point in time within, within IT, and they majorly um, uh, surround um, uh, what are 21 squads for, for us in our organization. So to give you an idea about what a squad is within Nationwide, um, as you might imagine from a financial services organization, we have things like mortgages, we have things like current accounts. Um, we have squads that align to um, those product offerings to our members. Um, from a technology perspective, as you might imagine, um, given the challenges I've described, um, we have some, some old Unisys mainframes, for example, old mainframe technology that... Um, uh, is, is a challenge in terms of maintaining and, and supporting. Um, we also have newer technologies. So at the moment, we're implementing something called Speedler that we know of. Um, that's an event-driven architecture um, that is adopting um, technology like Kafka and MongoDB and, and, and the like. So you, you can see that we've got a wide spectrum of, of technologies that, that we can adopt and we have to deal with. Um, so, that's a bit about nationwide. Um, what I wanted to talk about now is a bit about the challenges of testing. And this isn't necessarily uh, unique to nationwide. This is uh, seems to be uh, unique in the um, industry of testing and maybe the mis mis misconception around um, testing and the challenges of, of delivery because of testing. Um, now, what I've, what I've provided on the slide is, is a couple of quotes from quite um, prominent uh, voices within the testing industry. Um, and really, it goes into um, challenging around um, not necessarily testing, but really understanding what we are trying to um, achieve in terms of IT change. And is it that, that testing and proving that um, the thing does what it's supposed to be doing um, really is misunderstood uh, when we talk about IT change? So Michael Bolton talks about um, engineering, and he talks about other engineering disciplines where um, to go and build something without um, designing it and architecting it beforehand just wouldn't be accepted, but we seem to do those kind of things in software. Um, another example, and, and really bringing it home the kind of the misconception around um, testing will trap all bugs, um, is um, Richard Bradshaw's fart model. Um, what he talks about there really um, is, is, is around the, the, um, the point that from a, a, an IT change perspective, we can never know everything about a system. And therefore, um, what we are continuing on is a journey to try and strive to expand our knowledge and understand more about the system and the changes that we're make to, making to systems each time we do it. And that really plays into the agenda that we're working with within Nationwide, where we start to um, really change the dialogue and, and the position of testing within the organization. And really what we do is we start to draw back on fundamentals of um, quality and fundamentals of testing. So within the uh, testing industry, we, we, we may do ISTQB um, uh, qualifications or ISEB if you're, if you're old enough to remember those things. And one of the first things we start to talk about is verification and validation, okay? Now, as an organization, Nationwide do lots of this, and I'm going to suggest that many, many organizations that are listening to this today will also do lots and lots of validation, lots and lots of testing, and lots and lots of challenges around testing being fast um, or too expensive and not automating enough. What we fail to do all too often is the verification, okay? Now, verification really is talking to, um, let's explore what we want this um, IT change to actually do? What is the objective we're trying to achieve? Um, do we, as, as, as a change function, really understand what we are trying to achieve before we embark on that journey? 
So what we start to talk about when we talk about the, the kind of the shift from verification and validation is, is, is really we pick up and, and really what is a buzzword within the kind of the IT industry is we start to look at BDD, so behavior driven development. And what we've done is we've adopted a lot of the, the kind of the fundamental principles of BDD around collaboration. And what you see here is our quality manifesto, if you like, around um, what does it mean to um, adopt a collaborative working environment within our cell structures or our squad structures? Okay, so the picture is an adaptation of um, uh, a chat called John Ferguson Smart's paper around um, BED, and we've ad adapted it for um, the context of nationwide. So um, to talk around the, the, the kind of the cycle and continuous cycle of learning and collaboration and improvement, what we've got at the top is the three amigos. Okay, so the product owner or the designer and the, biz uh, the business, the developer and the tester um, all get together. And as I described, um, we really need to understand um, what we are trying to do um, before we actually go and do it. Sounds obvious, but it would be surprising to to, to realise how many organizations how many teams really do not do that so what we've done is we've started to adopt um, modeling as a, a, a basis or an asset to um, facilitate that conversation okay so we use ARD agile requirements designer um, as uh, the fundamental building block to start building models of what our systems or our change is supposed to be doing okay the key thing here is around transparency Okay, we have a lot of complexity within our organization. Um, we've got to face into that, okay? And really understanding the areas of weakness in terms of knowledge, understanding what we don't know about interfaces, that's key in terms of um, being transparent, being honest, and working together with our three amigos, either within individual teams or across teams when we talk about the, the kind of the enterprise um, IT change function to understand how we can uh, essentially address that technical debt and we can start to come together in a collaborative, um, meaningful way to deliver um, IT change. Now, I think it's quite interesting when we kind of talk about testing, um, all too often we get onto test automation. And for a long, long time uh, within Nationwide, test automation has been the be all and end all when it comes to testing. Um, I think the problem with that is we quite often lose the fact that the prime goal of, of, of testing to, is to um, assess quality within the product. And, 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 and all too often that's lost. And it's quite interesting that, that time and time again, we would have gone on kind of automation exercises in the past with the nationwide and we would have failed. OK. And since we've adopted um, modeling and this um, uh, collaborative understanding of what we're doing, we have a hell of a lot of predictability in the solution we are trying to build. And therefore, what does predictability and repeatability give you? It gives you the opportunity to go and automate the assets the, the test assets um, that you are um, trying to deliver through um, your, your, your test teams and, and you know, as, as quickly as you can, um, you know, through, through Agile teams, for example, you're, you're, you're delivering them on, on a repeated basis. Um, because of this and because of the ways of working, because of the way that Nationwide wants to adopt this iterative continual delivery mode, then it's imperative that we have automation as a, as a fundamental building block to the way that we execute tests because they are going to go into our CI CD pipelines, okay? So um, continuous delivery without continuous testing, i.e. automation, is, isn't really possible. You can't keep up the cadence of change. And I would suggest that continuous automation without continuous modeling also isn't cap uh, uh, possible because you can't keep up that continual cadence of predictability and the continuous cadence of automation, okay? What we do as part of our CI CD pipeline, because all of these things are automated, we collect a lot of metric to understand um, where we're efficient and where we're inefficient. Because the key on this is to understand, continuously learn, and continuously prove, continuously adopt lean practices to get faster and faster. Okay. And then when we understand where we're doing this well, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're celebrating those. Um, milestones, those achievements, those ways of working so we can proliferate them out through our organization. We've got 130 projects that are making these change activities all of the time. So, touched a little bit about kind of our ecosystem of what we're doing, um, but it isn't quite as easy as let's all get in a room and discuss what we're um, what we're trying to build. Um, there is a fundamental shift in the way that testing needs to be delivered and indeed uh, a fundamental shift in the way that systems are architected 
um, when we start to think about kind of monoliths to um, uh, decoupled um, IT estates that, that kind of adopt a, an API uh, first approach. Now, um, within the testing industry, um, we have something called testing pyramids. And um, what we have is, is kind of an anti-pattern a lot of the time that, that I will call ice creams, ice creams, okay? So what we talk about when we talk about ice creams is we have lots of UI-based tests that um, kind of are exploratory in what they're doing. Now, um, they're, lots of them are UI because um, a lot of tests come from the, um, the business and therefore naturally the way that we prove this thing is through uh, user experience. Um, a lot of the, the, the reason uh, these things are UI, UI based is because that's how we tend to design um, our systems. We tend to design them through business flows and user flows. And um, that's why a lot of what you see and a lot of what Nationwide historically has done is a lot of UI based tests where we need lots and lots of end-to-end -end environments and the reality is our expected results are quite unpredictable okay now that isn't a breeding ground for good automation um, what we've done is we've realized that's 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 an issue that's an anti-pattern and so what we've done is we've started to, started to shift towards um, volcanoes so ice creams to volcanoes okay so this is really adopting um, more stable more predictable ways of working, really breaking up the monolith into smaller segments of what we're doing. So what we talk about is rather than doing end-to-end -end tests, we start to talk about APIs and we start to talk about integration in the small. Um, so we're starting to almost crack this, this big monolith of, 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 of IT estate into much smaller manageable chunks that we can iterate around, okay? Now, the key for moving from the left to the right, the ice cream to the volcano, is really our modeling adaptation yeah and for us that's what test engineering is it's not the automation it's the adaptation of modeling so we can have that collaborative technical conversation not about what how the business flows work but how do apis interact with apis of other systems and that's real key differentiator around kind of old ways of testing to newer ways of test engineering within an organization now what many people I talk to within the organization then start to say is, is, is I shouldn't do any, any UI-based tests. And it kind of starts to create a bit of a, a, an odd conversation and a bit of nervousness around, um, we're going to go wholeheartedly to API-based API testing and you will never see anything on the UI again. Um, that's a bit of a misunderstanding about what the kind of the ice cream, the volcano is talking about. And therefore, what we're, we're really starting to do is we're starting to break up the topology of the IT estate. And we're starting to talk about the different types of testing that we can do to prove uh, our IT estate um, works as it's designed to um, be um, changed. OK, so um, what I've got here is a bit of a representation of um, the way that we tackle testing within Nationwide as a whole. So this isn't a team approach. This is a, a, a collective team approach. As you might imagine, um, in an organization where squads um, have to align themselves uh, in order to make end-to-end -end product journeys for us, um, it means that we've got to have a highly collaborative approach through teams, and therefore we might have a team that are making UI-based changes, and therefore they're going to concentrate a lot of their effort on UI-based testing from a testing team perspective, but they are gonna to talk to um, teams that um, are delivering middleware, so APIs or SOA, SOA uh, capabilities, and then there's got to be some kind of collaboration. Again, this is where modeling comes into its own to make sure that we've got the predictability and the consistency to make sure that both teams are working effectively and um, consistently, okay? Um, what we are starting to see as we develop this, and you'll, you'll notice on there we've got into an acceptance as well, um, let's not get away from the fact that we're still going to deliver something to our customers, our members, our business in terms of end-to-end -end acceptance, so they still want to see what we are doing. Um, what we're also starting to do is we're starting to explore different types of quality aspects. Okay, So you'll see on the left-hand side here, we talk about infrastructure. Okay, now um, a lot of testing traditionally is around functional testing, and then we'll start to tickle things like performance testing. We might even do OAT, we might even do security. Um, what we're starting to do, because modeling is giving us more time to look at these things, is we're starting to explore things like infrastructure and platform as a testing capability. And in the next slide, I'm going to show you an example about how we started to model one of those platform capabilities um, to bring consistency that we've then automated. Okay, so what you see here 
And this will be familiar to many organizations that are adopting uh, Linux. So this is a Red Hat Linux build that is part of a standard that you might see from the CIS benchmark. So if you're familiar with um, platforms and, and a CIS benchmark is an industry standard around how you should build uh, lots and lots of platforms. Um, what we've done is we've taken those, um, those benchmarks and we've started to visualize them within our modeling capability and we started to visualize them in ARD. So this is an, an ARD representation of um, a Red Hat Linux build version 2.1.1 for us. Um, within the organization. So as you might imagine, we, we will have a bit of a convey about where we will churn out these um, Linux servers um, time and time again. Now, what we have is we have predictability um, around um, what that build should look like. We also have a start to then develop a bit of an understanding about what complexity means, both in terms of the um, Linux build or, for example, a SQL build. Um, but what we also start to understand is when that um, standard starts to iterate, we start to understand the complexity that um, any change delivers to us. So um, what you see here is version 2.1.1. Um, what the CIS benchmark tends to do is deliver something every quarter or every, or, or every six months. Now, this is uh, six months later. So what you have here is 2.2.0. Okay. So what you start to see, and this is what the tooling allows us to do, because we bought these, built these collaborative models, we start to then understand impact of change. Okay. So the blue crosses you can see on the right-hand side against that model, they are um, elements of the Linux build that has been changed from previous version to the current version, okay? And you can start to then see through the numbers around the complexity of each individual area. Now, this example, if, you, if you're eagle-eyed and you start to look at the, the, the examples of um, where numbers have changed, you don't see a lot of change. The key around understanding where this is is really breaking it up into its lowest denominator. So what you start to see in here is through the Red Hat Linux build, you start to see lots of deltas of change um, around the builds. And that's really effective in terms of understanding um, project timelines or, or sprint timelines or cycle times or test estimates or build estimates. You start to get an idea around the complexity of things that your organization or your team is starting to take on. We capture a lot of information. We want to build models. We want to continually um, increase our understanding of what our systems are doing. Um, Understanding that we will never get to an end point where we finish, essentially. So we're always on this continuous improvement and we're always looking for continuous feedback. Okay. Now, what we've done is we've started to adopt um, a bit like the Gartner quadrants or the Forest of Waves. We started to, to, to adopt a, a maturity model, if you like, that are based on heuristics that really underpin um, our um, continuous uh, uh, manifesto, quality manifesto, and um, really the, the, the kind of the collaborative approach to BDD. And the bits that I've mentioned around testing needs to be predictable, it needs to be automated, it needs to be continual, it needs to be repetitive. And that's really the journey that many of our teams are on, moving themselves up this maturity quadrant, addressing the technical debt uh, at the same time. Recognizing that um, it's not a big bang, we're not really going to stop everything that we're doing to, to model the, the world. What we need to do is continually iterate around our understanding of change when change happens, but also build models at the same time to make sure that we continually stay on top of and we have an enduring asset um, to understand in the future. Okay, so what we what we encourage our teams to do is not necessarily think like a marathon runner. There's a defect on this slide. You'll see that Usain Bolt is not necessarily a marathon runner. Um, what we want people to do is think like Elliot Kepchogi, which is the, the, the chap that you've just seen there. What we used to think is that we want to be sprinters, okay? And um, we want to get something done as fast as possible. And that's really the trap of automation. We don't really want to do it as fast as possible. We want to do it continually fast. So if there's any key words, it's be predictable, then you can be fast and fast again. And Design must be a team sport. We've got to get involved um, in the Three Amigos conversation to, to really bring the quality agenda, the testing agenda, to make sure that we understand what the solution is, but the solution is built to be testable. Now, 
I've talked about modeling. I've talked about the challenges of our organization and the technical debt that we carry within our organization. And um, really the, the kind of the, the, the normal gotchas in terms of challenges of tests within the industry. Another big challenge around um, testing is um, data and environments. There's al almost a myth around um, can I uh, mask a copy of live data or can I synthesize um, 20 million records. Um, the reality is, why do you want to do that? Okay, live data is a very um, happy path representation of what the system is supposed to be doing. Um, unless I am running um, 20,000 or 20 million, sorry, tests, why do I ever want to create that much synthetic data? Um, it's a waste of money, it's a waste of time, it's a waste of resource. And what we, if there was a lesson to be learned, it, it's really um, back to the, the BDD the collaborative approach around understanding what you're doing, um, make sure that's structured, make sure that's understood, make sure that's optimized. And therefore, these things like data, these things like environments, um, start to become easier because um, what you start to do is you start to minimize or start to optimize what you actually need as a requirement for data. And in some circumstances, you actually remove the need for data. So if I understand my test scenario, I understand um, the logic that triggers that test scenario, um, I can create regular expressions, for example, and therefore I've eliminated the need for data. And that's really strong. And I think what that also goes with, and, and, and if you cast your mind back to the, the topology slide, um, when we talk about environment, time and time again, we've got far too many end-to-end -end environments. And as we start to um, really build out models around contract testing or interfaces, what we start to do is we start to realize where we can decouple environments and where we can replace environments with virtualized instances of them. Okay, And that's, again, a really effective way. And we've seen an acceleration. We've had data. We've had um, environment virtualization capabilities long before we ever did modeling. But we've seen a real acceleration since we adopted modeling techniques in terms of eliminating or minimizing the need for data and also minimizing the need for real environments and implementing um, environment virtualization. That's great, and we've got so far in terms of what we're doing, we're shifting left in terms of our modeling, um, we're adopting approaches like BDD, but we realize that um, the world is ever changing and the need to be faster um, is ever more. And therefore, what we're starting to do is we're starting to look at how can things like um, machine learning and AI help us to um, accelerate the technical debt that we've got within our organization, um, but also how can it also help us in terms of understanding quality better? So for example, how can we um, un uh, use machine learning, for example, for the, for the rafts of, of, of information that we gather from production today to understand um, how we can make our, uh, not only our testing better, but also um, our uh, three amigos conversation at the start of um, any IT change that we do. Um, not noting that we want to make sure that um, our models continually grow both in terms of our understanding of what the system should do, our understanding of what um, our exploration should do, but also how our members, our customers are using our solutions. I think one of the buzzwords that, that many people will know is around shift left. Um, I think the, the key thing is don't just shift left. Um, it's all about learning. It's all about analyzing. And that those sources of information come from, from all over the place. And um, you've got to take one step at a time and you've got to iterate around the, the understanding, the learning, the capturing the learning to make sure that you continually understand quality better because as, as, as a testing function, as a QA function, that's our goal, not necessarily to test something, but to make sure the agenda of quality is firmly on the minds of everybody. Quality is everybody's responsibility is really our tagline. So thanks, Rich. This was very, very insightful and certainly, you know, a lot of great ideas that I think many of our, many in the audience uh, will uh, will appreciate and relate to. I guess two part question is how hard this transformation was, if there are any lessons that you can share with uh, the audience. And secondly, how do we leverage the idea that you talked about to build more confidence into new deployment? So I think, I think, the easy answer to the first part, I, how do you start the transformation, is, is in the small. It's really surprising if you start to um, adopt these kind of collaborative ways of working, just how quickly you start to get outcomes in terms of productivity gains. And when we started to do that, we started to tell the world. We started to go out on a bit of a roadshow 
and and you know this is this is an eighteen month two year story where we've been on that roadshow collaboratively um, building momentum, if you like, to build on just um, the need to get those fundamental building blocks in place quickly followed by automation. I think how do you build quality from uh, from a delivery perspective? Um, I think it's an interesting question around um, who is the bearer of what quality is. Okay, and I think a lot of the time um, we embark on uh, IT change journeys without really understanding what we are trying to do. Okay, and um, although although we'll have a lot of uh, kind of um, teams that call themselves agile, they'll work in a very kind of waterfall way in terms of um, we'll kind of do some requirements and we'll chuck it over the fence to the build guys and we'll chuck it over the fence to the test guys. And um, there hasn't really been a, a consistent conversation and understanding about what quality means as a team collective. I think, I think it's an interesting one in that um, uh, there's lots of, of, of when, when you read a requirements document, people will take different interpretations of what that means. Um, when we start to build out models, um, it takes away a lot of the ambiguity, and we have absolute rules on what um, quality means in that respect. Okay, so, so, so for us, what we're trying to do is we're trying to turn quality, which a lot of the time is a subjective conversation, into an absolute objective conversation through driving to models and driving to decisions and driving to, um, for us, function point analysis as, as an end goal. Great. Um... Thank you, Rich, and thank you, folks, for uh, uh, for joining us today. As uh, just to summarize, you know what we heard from Rich is that look, I think digital transformation, as we can expect, is a is 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 a quite a revolutionary transformation. It requires not only you know a difference in the toolings and how we build application, but how do we think about application and quality? And Rich underlined the fact that quality is a shared responsibility. And that can only happen if you modify the thinking, the process, if you you know, start all the way from beginning, even before a right to report quality had to start from there. Uh, the other important thing we talked about, and you will get to see a lot more of that in the subsequent presentation of the power of AI and, and, and machine learning. Um, you know, the data, you know, there's a common saying out there that you can't fix anything unless you actually see the problem, right? And data is actually the way that we actually see where the problem are. That's how we get the end-to-end -end visibility, which is what the continual improvement and the concept of marathon runner uh, that you know Rich talked about. So again, thank you so much for joining today. And Rich, thank you so much for your time and sharing your insight. And um, for the audience, please stay tuned. And, and you'll get to actually see how we have taken some of the ideas from customers like Rich and incorporated that into our BizOps solution. Thank you.